that, I'd like to introduce uh, somebody that has been uh, with us for about 12, 13 years, Mr. Robert Castillo, our co-op CEO. He has a report uh, without this man and the staff that he continues to build and work with, we probably wouldn't be where we are. Mr. Castillo. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all for being here this morning, coming out to vote. People always ask me, who should I vote for? And I say, vote your conscience. So I'm sure you all did that today, and we appreciate you being here. I want to get into a few more specifics. Uh, Keith kind of laid out the vision, and I want to let you know where we've been, what we've done this past year, so that you have a better understanding of how your dollars, those are the rates you pay us, how they're being spent, and so forth. And I want to start with our new building. You know, I've always believed the old English proverb that good things come to those who wait. And I think it's a fitting description with regard to our new building. Uh, we've been in the old building for 75 years. You know, some people have asked me, why are you building a new building? It's like, well, the old one's been around 75 years. I used to be able to show off a leak right above my desk, right behind my head when people came in. And if it was raining, we had to go to another room to meet. Anyway, we have since moved to the new building, and we're very proud of that building. I think we tried to think, our board did, of our membership as we built this new building. What can we do to improve it for our membership? Well, one thing we've done, and I think a lot of you will find handy, is that we now have a drive-up window, where if you don't, if you're in a hurry or you just don't feel like coming in to see us, uh, you do have to pay your bill. You can drive up to the window, and it's a nice turnaround. Uh, one person has told me that they think it's too tight. It was designed for up to a one-ton pickup truck. So if you're driving your RV, uh, please, you know, wait a day and bring your smaller vehicle to come and pay us. Another thing that we've done uh, for our membership, I believe, is this building, we built a nice big training room and we can combine it with our boardroom and rearrange the furniture and it will be made available to you, our membership, to organizations uh, who need space to have training or have a, a board meeting or whatever. In the past, we have done that in our old building, but our boardroom was so small, it was very hard to accommodate the public. So if you've got a meeting coming up, you belong to an organization, please feel free to come by and request use of our building and take good care of it while you're there because we're trying to keep it in good shape so we can last another 75 years. And another reason we've done it is because we've expanded and that'll get me to talking a little bit about broadband. We've had to expand our, our employees. When I started, and it, Keith was right, it's been 12 or 13. Actually, this is my 13th annual meeting. We've expanded. We had 66 full-time employees when I came here. Today, I believe we have about 82, and we're budgeted to go up to about 88 employees. And again, those employees, guess where they come from? They come from our service territory, our membership. So it's a win-win situation. Broadband, we're doing very well. We started up in 2017, and Clementa Sanchez, our senator and president of TBK at the time, he was our first guinea pig. I said, Clemente, would you mind being our customer for broadband? And we're experimenting, and, and he took a big risk because they deal with a lot of money. And we had a, a few bumps, nothing terminal along the way, but we got it all figured out. Today, we're up to 3,400 customers and growing. We just sealed a deal. We're working with the tribes. We got a deal with uh, the Zuni tribe, approximately 2,000 residents out there. And the tribal government agreed with us. They got a federal grant, and we've reached an agreement where we're going to serve virtually 100% of their members 
and their tribal government is going to pay their bills on their behalf. And what's good for us is we don't have to chase 2,000 customers for payment every month. So that's a great deal. We're looking at another deal, Socorro Electric, our sister cooperative that we abut, territorial speaking, territorially speaking. They received a grant from the state of New Mexico and they've asked us to please work with them because we've gained expertise since 2017. We have a pretty robust broadband company right now and so they've asked us to team up with them and help serve. They got a grant to serve the community of Magdalena and so we're trying to work something out to help out their membership and uh, obviously keep our membership whole in the process. We're gonna use our, our brains and their money, how's that? And we're gonna get service out there. Now these things also cost money. I want you to be perfectly aware. And we ourselves have gotten a couple of grants that we're very proud of. We've gotten a few we got a $1 million grant from Santa Fe. We got a $3 million grant. And I think you're, most of you are aware, we got a $38 million grant back in December of 2020. And that's what is allowing us to develop our various areas. And so it, it does take time, but we have the expertise and we're doing the design to reach just about every part, every portion of our service territory. Presently, we just moved into uh, the community of Rama. We're starting to build out there. Uh, and so we're in different communities. Some of you are feeling it. Some of you are still wondering, when the heck is this ever gonna come to me? Uh, we haven't forgotten anybody, but it does take time and it's gotta be done in sequence. And in this whole process, COVID hit it's very expensive to get the materials. Sometimes we can't get them for a year, for two years, but we're pressing ahead, looking for different providers, doing whatever we can to expedite and get broadband to everyone. At the same time, I don't want you to feel like, oh, so now they're into broadband. They think they're big time and, and they're forgetting us on the electric side. No, we're not. Broadband was a byproduct of us trying to improve our electric system, and I've said this time and time before. We've introduced SCADA, which is a way to monitor the service that we provide. It monitors our substations, and so we're developing our software, developing our people to help shorten outages that you have on the electric side. And broadband fiber cable is what we took out to our substations, and the byproduct was, well, hey, why don't we sell this broadband to those people who voluntarily want to take it and those dollars are being used to subsidize our improvements on the electric side, if you will. So we're getting a better, more sound electric system and we're able to provide broadband. In 2017, people would tell me, oh, that's a luxury. It's for the rich people and we poor customers are paying for that. And I said, no, it's to improve the electric system to sh shorten the outages of our members and let those rich people buy broadband from us and help subsidize our expenses. And that's exactly how it's been working. But it's not only the rich people, you know, COVID came and all of a sudden broadband was determined to be essential. And so our timing, you know, I guess we're very lucky or you all go to church because the good Lord uh, put us in the right place at the right time. Because today, broadband has been determined essential. The federal government is putting out a lot of federal dollars. And we got off the ground when it was still experimental and, and a luxury, they told me. But today, we're right there at the right time. And we're, gonna, we're doing our best to provide everybody with broadband as we improve our electric system uh, when I came to work here, I felt like it was a pretty sound system, but it needed some improving. And I tell people today, well, it's already 2023, but we're finally bringing our utility into the 21st century. We're about 23 years late, but we're almost completed. 
because we have a pretty automated system. We're still working on that aspect where we can uh, find outages quicker and get you back in service as soon as possible. So we're very proud of that aspect. Now, yes, this costs money. And yes, we get complaints about, well, we recently had a rate increase. How many of you have felt that on your bills? Wow. I see two hands and they're from the same body. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll count that as one. And, and I want you to know, we're aware, we're sensitive to that. Our costs have gone up. Our costs of everything have gone up because of COVID. And getting back to broadband, the revenues that we have generated have helped us to offset those increases, not completely, but a good, about 50% of our increases have been set off by broadband revenues. But we still had to have, and we applied for and received from the PRC, Public Regulation Commission, uh, the permission to raise our rates 5%. So that's what you all have gotten on your bills, a 5% increase which is actually very good in these times because I've done a comparison to other cooperatives in the state. I know one that had to go in and ask for 12%. Another one had to go in and ask for 10%. So I think we've been good stewards of the money you all give to us and we've done the very best we can to control costs in very trying times. And we're looking to continue going forward. Again, we're in a period of unprecedented inflation and we're doing our best to keep things under control. And our, our goal is to provide affordable, reliable service. And Keith touched on the industry is changing. It's changing rapidly. Our guest from Tri-State made note of that. Tri-State is trying to figure out what we need to do to position ourselves to be at the head of the pack as this transition takes place. And how do we maintain re reliable energy for all of you? So with that, I thank you all for being here today and listening to all of us speak. And if you have questions or comments that you want to make, you know, come by the office, come see us. If you have one, have one right now that can't wait, raise your hand. And we'll entertain a question or two. We have one over here. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. <laughs> and with that, I'll turn the podium back to our president. Thank you all. Thank you, Robert.